mean, America is something that you see on the movies and on television. So to come here and actually experience it yeah. is really enlightening. Yeah. What are your words of advice to anyone who says, oh, I don't have the money or I, I don't have the time to travel? They're just excuses. Get a passport and do it because this is not a dress rehearsal. This is real life. That's right. Do it. I do it. Agree. Get do it. <laughs> drink in Memphis probably is the walk me down it is a huge 32 ounces you walk down Bill Street but you're gonna stagger back it's a lot of fun we have blues we have booze and we have a lot of fun now before the Orpheum there was an opera house here in 1921 standing right over there across the street at Main and Bill Street is where Mary and her parents were standing they were coming to see an opera show she jerked away from them in her excitement leaped off the side of the curb and and a trolley hit her. So her spirit was released into this area. Well, throughout the course of the show, several things happened that caused them to end it, to not even complete the first night. Actors reported being locked in their dressing rooms. Costumes were shredded with spoiled milk. This went down in history as the worst tour of Fiddler on the Roof ever. So we're gonna move on down to de demonic possession. We just learned about the uh, Orpheum Theater. Supposedly there's like 22 ghosts there. Today, this is the only surviving hotel on this block, and it is Pontotoc Hotel, and it is um, occupied by a demon. 1956, her and her parents move in here as a boarding house. Now, the parents said that they kept the doors open that entire night. The mother and father's door was open, and the little girl's door was wide open. Well, around 2 a.m., the young lady said she began to toss and turn, and she couldn't get to sleep. Finally, sits up in bed. She looks over to her window where the light is coming out, and there, sitting on the windowsill as a black, shadowy figure, just kind of hunched over, sitting in the window. It's clearly a man, it's clearly a person in her mind, and she can only fathom that it's her father. So she calls out and says, Daddy, and it does not respond. She tries to wake her sister up, her sister does not get up. She goes across the hall to her parents' room and she says, Mom, Dad, there's someone sitting in my window. They just assume she was being, you know, a kid in a new place, didn't wanna sleep in her own bedroom. So she says, okay, she goes back in her bedroom. She doesn't see the figure sitting in the window anymore. She gets in the bed, but she still can't go to sleep. Now she gets up this time, she flips over to her sister and she happens to look up and there standing over the bed is this huge shadowy black figure. She described it to be about six foot seven, completely blacked out. She hops out of the bed, runs over to her parents. She says, Mom and Dad, it's back and it's standing over her bed. You have to come in here now. You have to come in here now. And they say, no, we're not coming in there. You're going back to bed and we're going to stay over here. Go to sleep. So she takes the covers off of her head. Out of nowhere, the door starts to slowly close. And she described it as closing so slowly that you couldn't even see it move. Just every few seconds, you'd see that it was here and then that it was here. And then finally it closed and then clicked. Ooh. Yeah, that's that is what got me, is just how that it moved. She said it never just slowly said, you know, it was here and then here and then there. Yeah. And then it clicked close. It didn't lock. You know, it was here. The next morning, she finally found some sleep. She woke up. She had lacerations all over her body. She was laying in bed again with her sister right next to her. Out of nowhere, around 2.30 in the morning, she starts to feel the sheets being pulled off of her body to the left and down. She follows the sheets over to the ground and there crouching next to her bed is this black shadowy figure clawing at her sheets. She said she could distinctively remember the black sharp fingers pulling away at the sheets. Eventually when she got up the next morning, she saw that they were actually ripped. I've also been telling my story, someone snapped a picture of me and right back there on that man hole behind me because I know exactly where it is there the shadowy figure was standing in a picture but a demon has the special ability to physically touch and harm you and, um, yeah. man the first two months of working here I saw more than I needed to completely unbelievable. 